Ten minute warning to our first four runner sled. Ten minute warning to our four runner sleds.
your own race day. High line and curve 10. Two minutes to our first four-runner sled. Final race weekend of the BMW IBS F Box A and Skeleton World Cup, and we're back in one of the homes of sliding in upstate New York at Lake Placid, a double Olympic venue. And much of the track, you can still see the old mile and a half track running down the mountain beside the current iteration. Well, it's the second and deciding heat of our final skeleton race of the season. The fastest 25 sleds go through into the last run. And after the first heat, we've got a very interesting race in prospect. Great Britain's Marcus Wyatt lies in fourth place, just one hundredth ahead of Mattia Gaspari. Thank you, Bob. Marcus Wyatt lies in third place. Matt Weston lies in fourth place ahead of Mattia Gaspari. Amadeo Banias, on a good day for the Italians, lies in second place. Fastest starter in the field by just a hundredth of a second. And he's 11 hundredths of a lead that he held for half a dozen slits. But the man who has the lead and was in front for all 25 of our 35 sleds, China's Yin Chen. Now, Yin has won the last two straight World Cup races, going for a hat trick. And it now seems almost inevitable 
that he will grab a crystal globe at the end of the season as well three are given away to the top three in the world cup rankings gold silver and bronze at the moment matt weston in fourth place on target to claim the gold ahead of christopher grothair who was the points leader coming in yin cheng will move up to third place as Jung Seung Gui uh, popped the spur in the first heat and is last. And Christopher Grothair in 18th place needs to make up about 10 spots if he is to take the gold crystal globe away from Matt Weston. Now down to 25th place, Lucas Defaye. They all go again and below him remaining sleds do not get a final heat in addition to the battle for the crystal globes there is christopher grode here we also have the pan am championship and in this men's competition three american sliders and one canadian three americans are in the top 25 we'll see all them ryan coon didn't make it through but he is still going to be counted so he will be in fourth place on the pan am championship podium you saw a couple of our German athletes, Felix Keisinger, and you just saw there uh, Felix Seibel. There's Dan Barefoot, Dan in uh, 12th place after the first of our two heats. And he is, in fact, the best placed of the US sliders. So here's the point situation. Grote here, if nothing changes, will end up on 1486. Weston on 1532, and Yin on 1453. And that means that it will be Weston who takes gold, silver for last year's World Cup champion, Christopher Grote here, and bronze for Yin. Last year it was Grote here, Weston and Wyatt, the top three. And Marcus Wyatt is currently in sixth place behind Felix Keisinger by a handful of points. But he's not going to get into the top three, I don't think, unless there are some catastrophes ahead, which in this sport is not impossible. Over there somewhere, just out of shot, is White Face Mountain, which gives its name to the corner that sort of looks across the valley at it. But you won't see much of that today. What you will see is 25 sliders in the final run of the season. Luca Tifaye going first ahead of him. Uh, is Nick Timming, then Hunter Williams, Yaroslav Yevrenyuk, and so on, until we get all the way down through the order. Gung Weng Chang in his first World Cup race since 2022 is in eighth place. Yan Wen Gang is in sixth, and Yin Cheng is our first heat leader. In the first heat, it was Frenchman Lucas Defaye who was first out, and he is first out again in the second heat. 25th after the first run of the 24th fastest start, 5.05. Let's see what he's got to offer us in this run, 5.07. Now the track was minus 9, a windy minus 11 when we started the race. This is his first World Cup race here, raced in the NAC two weeks ago and postseason last year. 18th and 19th in a massive 50 sled field a couple of weeks ago. Shows good potential. We cannot quite match that in the first trip down the mountain today. Out of Benham's Bend through the chicane. 116, six kilometers an hour. 72.4 miles an hour, still accelerating at that stage, down into the heart, back up the hill, 54.97, so a whisker slower than his first heat of 54.84. That might move him up the order, but he is going to require others to make more errors and basically drop behind him. That is his 11th World Cup race completed. Career high of 17th in Altenburg. But this will be his first World Cup result here in North America. So he didn't race here last year when he started his World Cup campaign. Rounds out the season with two NAC races and a World Cup race. And of course, next time we come back here, it will be the World Championships. Yeah, I hope to have a little bit more experience under his belt by then.
Next up, Australia's Nick Timmings. 1200s in front. And the Aussie coming late in the race, 31st out of our 35 athletes, but a track so cold, holding up very well, I think, giving plenty of speed. Like Leslie Stratton there, the former Swedish slider, or might be possibly still current Swedish slider, depending on what next season brings. We'll wait and see. And the colours of Australia, green and gold. From Perth, Western Australia, Nick Timmings with plenty of experience on this track. Most of he and Dean's sliding has been in North America on the Canadian and US tracks. This is his 17th World Cup start. And at a speed of all the way down at 35A, or at least now he has, 69.1 to 68.6. Not as tidy as she came as the first run down. Speed is decent, 72.6 miles an hour. And he will be our leader at the line. 54.81, again, 54.72 in the third heat. So not quite as quick. So has returned this afternoon. And don't forget, we still have another race to get underway. We've got the women's skeleton coming up this afternoon as well. That will start at 3.30 local. So we'll be finishing that under lights in the darkness. Heading down into the chicane, a long right-hand post here. Then hit that little bump in the center. It throws you out. Oh, I get some sun now. Oh, thank God. Hi, oh, Bonnie, Stanley, everyone back home. It's a tough life, isn't it? It's a tough life. Next up, Hunter William. Now, the mess on the front of his helmet, you will see why there is no paint left on the front of his helmet. That's just bare carbon. Only a hundred of the heads of Nick Timmings. This man, ninth fastest data in the field. And Hunter, boy, does he commit to his line. Long limbs coming out to steer him down into turn one. Another strong start, 485. Takes that hit out to three. Nineteen hundreds ahead of Nick Timmings. And again, when he gets into the quick parts of the track, watch how it's not just chin on the ice, but forehead on the ice. He absolutely buries his helmet. Best speed of all, 111.4, there you go. 69.2 miles an hour. Absolutely committed, not looking at all through the chicane. Third best speed though, scrubbing off a little of it, and he's dropping behind. Nick Timming will stay in the leader's box. He does, 400s back, a loss of 500s, 54.86. So Nick Timmings remains in the leader's box. Somebody get him a jacket or he'll be whinging on about how cold it is again in the winter. And winter in Perth, in fairness, isn't that cold. But great speed at the start, great commitment from Hunter Williams. All he needs is a few more trips. He's only had five North America's Cup races here in his occasional sliding career since November 2019. I mean, that's five years ago, but he's only had five races on the track before today. Speed at the start is there. The commitment is there. Just needs a bit more experience. Yaroslav Lavrenyuk, the youngest athlete in the field, just 16 years of age. Youth Olympic silver medalist in Beijing last month. Started 5.21 in the first heat, 5.12 in the second. That's a great getaway. Four, seven, 
Always good to find an improvement. Little looping height in corner three, though. Out two and three. Not too bad, but losing a little bit of ground to Nick Evans. 1,200s back. Now, can he drive it back from below Shady? Third best speed. Doesn't have enough on board. And again, late out of 12. Out of Venom's bed through the chicane. Third best speed and skidding it away. He's going to drop a couple of spots. Might, might even drop behind Luca Dupayet. No, 300s ahead of the Frenchman. 55-0, so loses a couple of spots there. And again, first time here for Yaroslav Lavrenyuk. 24th and 18th in the two NAC races. And he will end up 24th in the World Cup. Not as big a field, but with even more pallet. Tapped at the top end. Well, watch the chicane, gets the tap on the sliders right. We didn't, he got a skid though, and then sled breaks sideways. It comes over a little brow and starts to head back down. Glory to Ukraine, Slava Ukraine! What a happy bunny he is. He's about the same age that we met his teammate, Vladislav Heraskevich as well. So plenty of years left in him. Next up from Great Britain, Jacob Salisbury. 21st after the first heat of the sixth fastest start. So the disconnect between the two is lack of experience on the track. Only two visits here, this has been the second of them. Came here in March 2023, post-season. And did not have a good time in the one NAC race he did a couple of weeks ago. He was 49th. 485 is going to be a top six start, but again, watch the legs because the sled is sliding sideways. It's been a couple of times already that it's not following his head. He's trying to lead it, it is not following in a straight line. The best speed was 4800s up down to 37. This will be barely a quarter of a second in front. Fourth best speed. Only one athlete slower is what we're saying at this stage. 2200s just in front, 54.70. So 400s slower than his first heat. Nobody has quite matched their first run pace so far. Jacob Salisbury at least though does not lose a position. And it was only 700s at the top 20. There's Matt Weston's mum and dad there at the top. Some fellow Brits. Again, that big looping height early on. Such uncomfortable landing. Him steering hard here as he comes out of Ben's Bend. And this is the reverse angle of that shot coming towards the camera. See the ice firing off the wall. Good one. Yeah. <laughs> Not a happy camper. Jacob Salisbury leads first five sleds down. Practice Eighth and final race of the BMW ISF Men's Skeleton here. World Cup in Lake Placid, USA. Livio Sormata of Switzerland next up. Electrifying starter. 4.80 getaway. What a start he had in the first heat. 484, still very quick indeed. That'll be another top five start. But only 100th quicker than Jacob Salisbury, which means as he laid on the sled, he only had 800s in hand, out to 1400s. Looking a little wild early on. Out of Shady. Smooth transition into the labyrinth, but only the six best speed. Out of Venom's bend, hits the chicane hard. Oh, and all the speed is going to go away. Six best there. That means the slowest sled so far. He will be behind at the line. 
Salisbury is in the top 20, and Livio Summermatter slips a spot. Well, you can see, didn't quite have the slid speed to get right up to the top. And this little late exit, you see his left toe hovering there, and then his right steering away out of Benham's Bend. Takes a big hit going through the chicane, and then another big hit on the far side. The wall here sort of disguises it, but you see the ice flying off the wall. Next up. <laughs> and that is the World Cup season completed for Livio Sommermata. Next up, Austria's Sammy Meyer, former world champion Andy Schmidt. Now heading up the Austrian right. coaching program. Samuel Mayer. 19th fastest start, 19th at the bottom. He was looking to improve on that for much of the run, and it all sort of went away below Benham Spend. 501 start, a whisker quicker than his first. Has he made any setup changes to give him just a little bit more control at speed? Takes that hit. Out of three into four. Ooh, little late exit down in the Devil's Highway. Bits of tape flying off the sled. Again, that's a patch of the cold. Out of Shady. Straight down the tubes in 11. Nice low labyrinth. Not too bad off 12. Out of Benham's end. All big steers, but he's got the third best speed. Easing away from Jacob Salisbury. 1700s up, 1900s up, should be a quarter of a second in front, hits the wall, doesn't get that extra speed. A 54 6 7 slide, 1700 slower than his first run, but enough to put him in front of Jacob Salisbury by a fraction. It was 1800s up on Jacob after the first heat and moves out to 1900s. Well, there's the hit everybody gets from three to four. This is the view away from Benham's Bend. Look at legs, tap dancing his way down the straight. Trying to get the steer, then trying to stop it over correcting itself over the brow, and then trying to get the opposite lock dialed in again. Now then. This needs to be absolutely spectacular for Christopher Grothair, newly crowned world champion, loses the season Crystal Globe. 18th place, nowhere near what he needs. He, he genuinely, I think, needs to be about 10 places higher up. And I don't know what happened on his first run. He's the worst placed of our four German sliders. 4.98. Right, a couple of hundred slower than his first hit. Third best speed of the fourth best start. Takes the hit into three. What are we seeing here? Looks clean so far. Can he somehow drag this back? 1100s up. He was 1900s up. Fourth best speed. No. No! It is going away from Christopher Grothair. Nine best, a 900 up, only second best speed. Fastest action was Nick Timmins, so he should still have the lead. He shouldn't lose a place. He does not lose a place, 54-64. But that is 2,700 slower than his first run. Up next, we have Genuinely have no idea what is going on here. But that is it, you can see it in his face. He knows that he was in a deep, deep hole and he couldn't get himself out of it. 
And whether it's runner choice or set up on those runners or... I, I don't know. I can't tell you what on earth just happened. The Olympic champion, the reigning world champion, the World Cup champion, the yellow jersey of the World Cup points leader. That's it, he's done. Well, now for Christian Bader there with the sled, who's the head of the German coaching. He's got other fish to fry as well. Germans helping out with Dane. Rasmus Johansson helping out with the kit, with the coaching. And Rasmus having a really strong season for such a new young slider. 4.99 getaway. Started 4.97 in the first inning. He was only 200 ahead of Christopher Crowe here. And it is entirely possible that Grothair will pick up a spot, or two, or three, or four, or five, because Grothair was only actually about 600 out of 13th place down in 18th. But again, 500s back, better speed than Grothair. Oh, horribly late exit. This is going to be tight. A tenth back, he's not going to make it. Grothair was quicker. So Grothair picks up one place. Rasmus Johansson is going to slip at least one spot. Only oh, one spot, 54-78. But Christopher Grothair, very disappointed to see that. Just looking absolutely bereft. And Grothair does need to pick off the next five or six sleds genuinely to really give himself a chance. He needs to be top 10, top 12 at absolute worst. Well, not a bad looking run from Rasmus Johansson. Maybe not quite what he needed. Best result of the season for him, seventh place in Lillehammer. He was absolutely flying there. Mission accomplished. Thank you for everyone involved in the season. Really good. It has been a really good season. Rasmus Johansson, well, he has done that. What about Austin Florian? Only just got on the sled. Last year in sixth place here in Lake Placid. Currently in the silver medal position in the Pan Am Championship. The riders from North and South America and the Caribbean, which in the men's field is the USA and Canada. 479 get away. That's Shows you how much lower his 491 was when he slipped and basically fell on the ice beside, not quite beside the sled, but his right hand missed the sled entirely. And he's out for vengeance, isn't he? It should have been a top six all the way. A genuine way he's been signing this year. I think Austin Florian probably fancied a chance of a medal, even in this field. Best speed of all, 111.5. Shoots the chicane beautifully. 117.5, 73 miles an hour on the nose. That's the end of Grothair's move up the order, at least for one sled. 53.98 compared to 54.34. Thirty-six hundreds quicker from Austin Florian. Well, there's some redemption. Fifty-three ninety-eight is the tenth fastest time of the entire race. <laughs> there's a lot of high fiving to be done. You've got to be quite tall to get all the way to the end of the line. Right. Now then, watch where his right hand goes onto the handle. In the first heat, it went straight past that handle onto the ice. Luckily, his body fell into the sled and he managed to complete the run in what was eventually 14th place, but nowhere near Woo! where he might have been. Give it some cowbell. There you go, Austin Florian leads with 15 sleds still to go.
After the first of our two heats in Lake Placid, the eighth and final race, the Men's Skeleton World Cup, we had a tie for 14. Craig Thompson and Felix Keisinger finishing on identical times. Thompson goes first. Started five dead, 5.09. That's a big drop off of performance. And he was tied to the 100 with Keisinger. I should have started 500s quicker and had a bit of a shocker of a run. Race wasn't as tidy as it might have been. And look how far he is behind. Six tenths. This is another position potentially for Christopher Grodenhair. Because Thompson is having a nightmare. 6,200s back. Good speed. 5500s back. He's not going to catch Austin Florian. At the line, he is second. He is ahead of Christopher Grodehair. Craig Thompson again. A little bit slower at the start. The 53.98. And I beg your pardon, a, a 54.56 compared to a 54.31. What are we seeing here at the start? No slippage. So, oof. yeah, nearly ran onto the sled, so he had to adjust his pace. And when you do that as you're accelerating, of course, you decelerate or you accelerate less quickly. Long skid and a big toe steer there. Again, that tape flapping around in the okay. breeze. Hello, everyone. See you soon. <laughs> Congratulations from Sammy. My next up is Felix Keisinger. Kaisi set the time that Craig Thompson then tied. Fifth World Cup here for Felix Keisinger. This is his 33rd World Cup start. Five medals in that time. Not going to add to that tally today. 488. But now Craig went 900 slower. And Kaisinger has just got 700 quicker. So that's a net gain of 1600 of a second before they even get on the sled for Kaisinger. And that is his lead now over Austin Florian. Florian started 479 and was only 300 behind. Made the part of Austin Lee, there was a deficit. Whoa! Florian is still rising up the order. Order. Kaisinger has not got what it takes. The best speed. He'll be ahead of Craig Thompson. Head down on the ice, across the line, in second place. 3,200s back. Well, 54.33, only 200 slow in his first heat, but not enough to keep him in front of Austin Florian. Well, Germans are not hooked up here. Nicely finished in eighth place here last year. Late height there in Shady. He's still climbing all the way up. And as a result, it's fired late off the exit. It's hard on the take on of 11. All right. So his world campaign is done. What about Axel Jung? The German side is in a bit of a cluster here, and we're still not in the top ten. Only one of them made it into the ten, and it's the new kid on the block. It's Axel Jung. Olympic silver medalist. Let's see what he's got. He has been a winner on this track, one of only two former winners in the race. 495 getaway, fifth fastest start so far. Again, 400 quicker than his first heat. Oh. Didn't come well out of three.
like in the first heat, lots of legs. Lots and lots of legs going on here. Axel finished fifth here last year. He was the winner here in 2019. Made his debut here back in 2012. His ninth World Cup in Lake Placid, and he's dropping behind Kaisinger and just seven hundreds behind his teammate, but loses two spots. So Austin Borian moving up the order. I do see Austin getting a top ten potentially. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Come see, come sir. Look at the skid there, out of three. Late exit out of three. Skids, kicks the wall, still hits it anyway. Face buried here in the labyrinth. In that big bouncing exit. And out of Benham's band, down into the chicane. Watch for the ice. Boom, there it is. And on the sliders left as well. That was a pretty bad day. Well, he tells it how it is. So, heading towards the top 12 now with Dan Barefoot. Top Pan Am slider, top American slider here. Let's see what he's got. 505 getaway, 503 in the first heat. So, at the moment, 1900s behind Austin Florian. We started 4.79. Dan only had 700s ahead of Austin after the first of the two heats, and he's already four tenths back. Now he's bringing it back. Now the shady, he's up to fourth on the splits. That's still ahead of Craig Thompson and still ahead of Christopher Grover. Hits the wall hard, but good speed. Second quickest, down to 11 fastest. Dropping down to fourth place for splits. This might be a little bit of redemption for Christopher Grone here. I don't think much. Fifth place, he's ahead of Grone here by 500s. And Austin Florian still leads. So Austin Florian will take the gold in the Pan Am Championship. Dan Barefoot will be the silver medalist. And that means then that Hunter Williams will take the bronze. Again, out of three, not quite the uncomfortable exit that we just saw from Axel Jung, but he was bouncing around there, wasn't he? And again, out of Benham's bend, watch the, yeah, watch the ice fly. Trying to steer away. Damage is done, and it. Thanks for coming, guys. 72 miles an hour. Hard to steer. 11. 200 out of a top 10 finish. Switzerland's Vincent Buff. 14th place in Lillehammer. His best World Cup result. This is his seventh World Cup race. And he's on for a big PB. And the way he slid the first heat, a top 10 might not be out of the question. 505 getaway. 200s quicker than his first run. Seven hundred behind Austin Florian from the start. Out the 2800s. He's going to drop behind Heisinger and Jung at the moment. But he had a good controlled run at the bottom part of the track. Nice height in shade, good exit as well. There you go, second best speed. Oh, a little late. Out of Benham's, into the chicane. Not too bad, still second best speed. 2,400 back. He's going to lose one spot, I think, to Austin Florian. But he will be ahead of Felix Kaiser and Axel Young. 54-45 slide. Now that's three tenths slower than his first heat. The track is not three tenths drift, but that's consistency. All right, so if nothing else changes, 
That is at least a 12th place finish. That is an all-time career high World Cup finish. His previous best, 14th in Lillehammer. Oh, properly aviating there, wasn't he? But squared the landing off quite nicely. Didn't do too bad a job in the chicane either. Kept the speed up. Thank you for the next Can't wait to see him progress next year. Austin Florian leads with 10 to go. 10th place, and it is our final German slider, the best of the quartet, Felix Seibel. We still have three Chinese sliders to go. That's how different each of those two nations have performed here. So Felix Seibel, first time here, only his eighth World Cup, first World Cup here anyway. Raced here in the Intercontinental Cup in January 2019, so five years ago. 5.04. Like his teammates, did not do the NAC races here a couple of weeks ago. Next time they see the track, it will be the World Championships. Well, and their performance here, they might rue that missed week of extra runs here. Felix Seidel, 2400s back. Best speed we've seen. Quicker than Craig Thompson by a couple of tenths of a mile an hour. 1200s back. He's closing now. Is he going to finally stop Osman Florian getting into the top ten? Is it Seidel at the line or is it Florian? It is Florian, 54-29 for Felix Seibel, he's second at the line. Thought for a moment he might even drop behind Vincent's Booth early on. And a very top part of the track, but Seibel gathered it all together and found the pace at the bottom. Big smile on his face. Top 10 guaranteed for Felix Seibel. And he is the best of the Germans in the season finale. It's been a good campaign for him. His best result, his first medal, a bronze in Lillehammer. And only once out of the top 10, that was 13th place in Innsbruck. Ninth in the plan, seventh in Samaritz, eighth in Segulda, sixth in Altenburg. Yeah, that's a good year. And it is Austin Florin that leads with nine to go. And Kim Ji Su with 2300s in hand. Is that going to be enough? Started 482 in the first heat. Florian started 479 in the second. 478. That's a great getaway from Kim Ji Su. And so he has 3300s. 2400s, I beg your pardon. My maths isn't what it ought to be. Still with over two tenths in the back. Mm, uncomfortable dev Devil's Highway. Two tenths on the money as he gets out of Shady. Speed's not there. Cyborg quickest at the bottom, but Austin Florian second or third on the speed traps. 1900s. Still a long way to the line, and now we start to go uphill. Is he going to take the lead from Austin Florian? He should do. He does, hits the wall, but takes the lead with eight to go. So Austin Florian will be no worse than 10th and might yet get a spot. Well, Kim looking relatively happy with that. His body language isn't hard to read. Clicking his heels together as he came up the finish line. That's not a frustration symbol. Hard transition there. Again, big left exit. You see his chin there on the ice all the way. So Kim Ji Su leads, eight to go. 
Well, eighth place in Sam Ritz is Kim's best result of the season. Don't expect any gimmies, though, from this man, Gung Wing Chang. Jack is clear to start one before... Gung returning to the World Cup for the first time since... Uh, when was his last World Cup race? January 2022 in Winterberg. This is his last World Cup race before not getting a spot in the Olympics. 4.97 get away, 4.99 in the petite. He's been playing his trade outside of the World Cup for the last two seasons. He's only the third best ranked of the three Chinese sliders at the moment. He has got experience. This is his 26th World Cup race on big late height. Had to work really hard off Shady. He's gone from 200 to back at the start to a 10th back. Somebody's tape is still in the track. Only the seventh best speed. It's all going away. He's going to be behind Kim Ji Soo. Found it at the bottom to come back to just 600 to back and be ahead of Austin Florian. Oh boy, that was close. 54-36. A 53-94 first heat. So it was a long way shy of what he produced in the first round. Look at this, just climbing all the way through Shady. I mean, way up there. Got it down without injury, but that definitely took some speed off him. There's the bit of tape. Is that a bit of Craig Thompson's sled? I think it probably is. So Gung slips a spot. Kim Ji Soo leads with seven to go. And next up for Ukraine, Vladislav Heraskevich. Vlad in seventh place after the first of our two heats. Career high have been four sixth place finishes for Vladislav in World Cup races. Best ever result here, an 11th place finish. Five previous World Cups. Last year was his best. Let's see if he can make it another top six. 501 getaway, find 700s at the start. Vlad ended up 506, the 26 past his start in a field of 35, and still drove himself down seven fastest. It's in the lead, but only just over Kim. Now he's starting to build it out of Sunny. Come on, Vlad, let's see a really huge run here. Best speed of all, 114-0. A mile an hour, quicker than anybody else. Shoots this game brilliantly, 119-6. Half a mile an hour, quicker than anybody else. Huge run. The run of his career from Vladislav Heriskevich. 53-7-4. first heat. 53-7-4 second heat. What a huge run. What a huge pair of runs from Vladislav Heriskevich. Well, he's always liked the tracks in North America. And boy, does it show. See you next season. Hey, see you in the leader's box. There's his dad, Mikhail, shouting him off as ever at the top. He doesn't have speed at the start, but boy, can he find it on this track. Track worker stepping in behind him to get that bit of tape, I think. Track is clear to start. What one. a good run from Vladislav Heriskevich. Now, Yang Wen Gang of China. Next up, yeah, our Olympic bronze medalist. Three World Cups here. Last season, his best result, an 11th place finish. At 900 hands, 
But in 4.95, finds 4.94. OK, so he's added another six hundreds to his lead over Vladislav Hegeskevic. 16 hundreds of a second up. Speed is good, not as good as Kim Ji Su of Korea. And from here on down, Vladislav Herostevic is the fastest. Gaps down to 600. Hits the wall. Second best speed. Close, but six tenths of a mile an hour slower than Herostevic. 1300s back. The speed's gone. He'll be second. He won't be the leader at the line. Herostevic will lead. It's five to go. 54-18. Disappointing run for Yan Wengang, the Olympic bronze medalist. Well, you can see the body language tells you everything you need to know. Took a bronze in the World Cup season opener in Beijing. Has not been on the podium since. And only one single-digit result the rest of the season, a sixth place in Lillehammer. His next best result was a 13th place in Altenburg. So actually, another sixth-place finish here. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Will not be too bad. Five to go. Vladislav Heroskevich right. leads Jan Wengang and Kim Ji Soon. Now then. Mattia Gaspari of Italy. What a first heat he had. He is 100th or fourth, 1900s out of a potential World Cup medal. Five dead start. That's 500s quicker than his first run. Mattia, this needs to be the best run you have put down in six years. It's looking nice so far. Right now, 900 ahead of Vladislav Heroskevich. If he drops one behind, it'll be top six on the wider podium. He slips behind Heroskevich by 100. Third best speed. First to third is 3,500. It's going away from Matija Gaspari at bottom. It's not going to take him into the top five. Second place at the line. Third place at the line. It is disappointment for the Italian. Not the second heat he needed. But for Vladislav Heroskevich of Ukraine, a top five guaranteed his best ever World Cup result. And for Mattia Gaspari, that will have to wait for another day. Didn't quite have the clean run that he needed. Sixth place, his best World Cup result from Samritz a couple of years back. Che stupido, che stupido. Ciao al prossimo anno. See you next year. Well, his only World Cup race here was in January 2016, Mattia, so it's been a while since he was on this ice. Now then, Matt Weston for the Golden Crystal Glow. 3,800s off the lead. Christopher Grote here is currently 13th. If Matt Weston finishes this run in the lead, he will be our World Cup champion. 4.82 get away, a great start, 4.84 in the first heat. This is deadly serious. He lost his world championship in Winterburg to Christopher Grodehair. He would love to take the Crystal Globe. Grodehair the winner in Yangqing and Lillehammer. Silver medalist in Samaritz and Altenburg, bronze medalist in La Plan. And Matt Weston, one win in Innsbruck. If he can get onto the podium here, it should be enough. 2200 ahead of Vladislav Herostevich.
but it was 47 hundreds. Touch and go. Oh, it's a dead heat to the line. Unbelievable. 53.87. It is a dead heat. He will be no worse than fourth. Vladislav Heristevich will be no worse than fourth. We have a tie for the lead with three to go. And I think Martin's the course has done the maths. And there's the family. You have done I think he has done it. It wasn't calm, cool and collected. It was fast and let it fly. Yes. Yes. Woo! Yes. Woo! <laughs> yes. There's your new oh. World Cup champion. His dad's celebrating in the background. But there are still three to go. So Marcus Wyatt, what can he do here? Now he was in a dead heat with Chen Wenhao of China. On points in sixth place. Chen is not here. So can Marcus Wyatt grab a medal? Silver medalist in Segunda, that's his only podium finish this year. 477, what a great start. Boy, if Matt Weston meant business, how much more business does Marcus Wyatt mean? Seven hundreds off the all flight car record, the fastest start of the competition so far. He was two tenths off the lead. He is going for it. Marcus White, third in last year's World Cup standings. Finished just off the podium, fourth here last year. Second best speed, 6100, still the lead over Heraskevich. And Weston shoots the chicane beautifully, half a second up. It's at least a bronze medal for Marcus Wyatt. First run, 53-49. Second run, 53-52. What a brilliant pair of runs from Marcus Wyatt. Just three hundreds apart. And he started four hundreds quicker. Second medal of the season for Marcus Wyatt. What a run, Marcus. You the man. Well done, mate. Well, what a start as well. 481, fourth fastest getaway in the first heat. He ups the ante with a 477. That is really laying down a marker now. He was 900 out of silver, two tenths away from the leader in the first heat. But that oh, leads special. Good last run, but let's have some relaxing time now. <laughs> All right, you can relax after the next four minutes. Amadeo Banyas, one World Cup medal in his career. It is a gold. Can he add to that? Eighth and 25th in the NAC races here a couple of weeks ago. 484 getaway, 500 slower than his first heat. And a long skid down to corner two. He's in the Devil's Highway at 21 degrees. He is indeed in the Devil's Highway. 100 behind Marcus Wyatt. It's half a second back to Matt Weston and Vladimir Harris Kevin. But he's losing ground to White. Look at the speed. Only eight rest, 112. Far too much skidding going on. The runners are sideways everywhere. Hits the chicane, skids through. Fifth best speed. He's not going to catch Marcus Wyatt. It'll be second at the line for Amadeo Banias. 53-94. Wyatt needs with one to go. Well, Amadeo Banyas will add a medal, a second medal to his World Cup tally. It will not be a gold, but it could be a silver. It will be no worse than bronze.
Well, maybe not quite the run he wanted. The winner in Sam Moritz. And there's the view going away from Benham's Bend. Not a big hit, but watch the sled skidding out of the second part of the chicane Ooh. down into the heart. All right, he's on the podium, second time in his career. Now then, the winner of the last two World Cup races in Segulda and Altenburg, both busy driver's tracks. This is a busy driver's track. Yin Che to make this a hat-trick of World Cup wins. Started 4-8-0 in the first heat. Can he find any more? No, 484. Same as Amadeo Vanis. Loses 700 and his two takes advantage to Marcus Wyatt. Oh, and a big hit out of three. Gaps down to 600. He was really flying at the bottom of the track. He needs to do it again. Big late height in Shady. 400, but good speed. Still has the lead. Easy to creep away from Marcus White. Is Yin Chen going to take a third straight win? Yes, he is. Best speed of all at the bottom. Sensational stop. Yin Chen makes it a hatching of wins. The three final races of the World Cup season fall to the Chinese slider. 68 is the run. Not as quick as Marcus Wyatt. He hangs on by four hundredths of a second. And he is our race winner. And he's in the Crystal Globe top three. Wow. What an end to the season from Yin Ching. What a smile on his face as well. Yin Ching, our push world champion, takes his third World Cup win, his third World Cup medal of any colour. But it was tight. 1,300s up as he got down to the start line. The gap came down to 400s at the bottom of the Devil's Highway. And then he stitched it all back together in the lower part of the track. A good gain and big speed at the bottom through the heart to just cling on by 400s. Well, three straight wins to round out the season. Yin Ching, the victor from Marcus Wyatt in second place. Third going to Amadeo Banyas with Matt Weston and Vladislav Heraskevich in fourth place. <laughs> Yang Wen Gang, Matia Gaspari, Kim Ji Su, Gung Wen Chang, and Austin Florian rounding out the top 10. Good recovery from Florian. Then youngsters Felix Seibel, Vincent Buff, Seibel the best of the Germans. And Christopher Grote here, what should have been a cruise to the World Cup title, just evaporated. And I don't know where or when or how it did. It is Austin Florian who will take the gold in the Pan Am Championship ahead of Dan Barefoot and Hunter Williams, with fourth place going to Canada's Ryan Kuhn. But our World Cup champion, the winner of the Crystal Globe, the gold Crystal Globe, is Matt Weston. Last year, the runner-up behind Christopher Grothair, he came here as the second-placed fighter behind Christopher Grothair. But while Weston held it together, Grothair could not. And he is our new World Cup champion. The well, mat never looked good for Christopher Grote here, and he didn't do enough. Chung sung when he popped the groove, I'm afraid, was destined immediately to lose third place in the race for the Crystal Globe. That went to Yin Cheng with his third straight win. 
Christopher Grote here takes the silver, but it is Matt Weston who takes the gold. Marcus White in fifth ahead of Amadeo Banyas. Banyas coming up from eighth place and White getting ahead of Felix Keisinger. There are the rest of the point scorers. See Matthias Gaspari, Axel Jung, absolutely inseparable. Not even one point between them at the end of the season. There's your top uh, top three in the race. Yin Cheng, Marcus Wyatt on the right, and Amadeo Banias on the left. And they get an otter. OK. Yeah, it's not a beaver. It is an otter. Yin Cheng, the gold. Marcus White, the silver. He's in the red jacket. Amadeo Banias. The bronze, he's in the silver jacket, grey jacket. Uh, Yin Ching's in the right place. Yeah, one out of three ain't bad. What can I tell you? And that is it for the Men's Skeleton World Cup for 23-24. Next up, the women's season finale. And that will be at 15.30 local, Eastern. 1930 GMP, 2030 CET. That is in an hour and seven minutes. We'll see you then. Bye for now.